Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. Today we have a new video, and for the next three videos, I've got something a little bit different. I'm going to be showing you full lures at the Chocolate Cafe. Uh, I didn't have a whole lot of time to record while I was there, so I didn't get the top tier catches that I wanted. I'm going to be heading back there uh, this next week and seeing if I can finish up a couple of evolutions that I'm extremely close on uh, when I have a little bit more time. Uh, there's a couple other videos in the works. Uh, there's a video I'm testing out um, um, incense at uh, a river house just next to the river. I know I took the boat ride. Now I'm just going to try I'm trying to loot or incense next to it. And then also I've got a video in the works that's more vlog style. I'm not sure how it's going to turn out. I haven't reviewed the footage. I haven't looked at it. So no promises on that. If it looks like some hot trash, then I'm not going to, I'm not putting it out. Uh, but if I can make it look presentable and make it look good, I'll definitely throw it out for you guys. Uh, so I'll have a little bit more music. And then I didn't catch too many Pokemon while I was out uh, doing what I was doing for this vlog style. It's, it was my cousin's art gallery. Uh, I explained it more in that video. Um, but I didn't find too many Pokemon. So I ended up uh, just going and luring up uh, Double Lure and just recording a couple of stuff there and then recording some eggs. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much. But I, I thought it would be something a little bit different out vlog style videos. Um, I have my own, like, you know, I have my my underlay and I have my, my gameplay. I don't know. I don't have any, like, I don't do the vlog style stuff. But I thought I'd do it for a video. I'll, I'll do it a little bit more here and there for different stuff if I'm going somewhere. If I'm just, like, showing up on location and catching Pokemon, then I, I don't see a reason for me to do that. And then... I kind of like, I like my underlay. Like, you don't see the underlay from other people. Like, I like it. I like it. But I think I should branch out. That's why I'm doing a little bit of different stuff. Uh, this is a little bit different. You don't really see people showing, like, full lures. So I thought I'd do that. It gives you kind of an idea of what you can expect. On some of these, I did get some hot trash. Um, but I did catch at least something halfway decent in all of these. And at least found some stuff that was, you know, above average. Uh, so there's not, they're not like these lures are some complete garbage. There is some decent stuff. It's not like all Pidgeys, Rattatas, and Weedles, and Caterpies, and Drowsies, and just junk. And I did speed up, uh, the parts where there weren't any Pokemon spawn, uh, because no one wants to watch that. So I, I think I, the first couple are like three, or I think they're 400 times. Then there's one that's 250, and then the rest are 300 times. I'm just going to go with 300 times for the next few videos, but... Um, or not 300 times, 300% faster, three times as fast, okay, okay, so let me get into this video, thought I should preface a little bit of things and just tell you what else is coming up, I also want to apologize for the lack of uploads, uh, like I said, I had, um, my cousin's art gallery to go, uh, to, she had an art exhibit, art showing, um, uh, of her thing. I'll throw it in a video somewhere. I did get a video of it. I think it looks pretty good. If nothing else, I'll, uh, she'll have, she has, like, a full, like, professional photo shoot of it and professional video documentary of it because the whole art exhibit, it was more of an exhibit. It wasn't like the art was for sale. It was just an exhibit, and you'll get that when you see it, uh, but if I can't get it, I'll rip the footage off of the the uh, the documentary and throw it up in a video so you guys can see it uh, obviously i'll let you know secondly wild vaporeon here um i don't think i've ever seen any wild evolutions from anyone so this was kind of crazy for me and i really wanted to catch it just because it was wild i took a picture there so i could send it to a friend um but i wanted to catch this just so i could have a uh, vaporeon that i caught in the wild and afterwards i named it wild but uh, like I was saying, I had the uh, art exhibit, so I spent like the whole day there. Uh, that was Saturday. I spent all of Saturday there and all of Friday. Um, my mom uh, is heading up to a wedding in Mackinac Island, so I had to help uh, get uh, all that stuff around for that. Um, I'm not heading to it because I don't actually know the people, and so... I had to help her get all that stuff around and head up to Mackinac and ha get some stuff packed up for her and all that because it was it's a long weekend and all of that different stuff. So all of Monday or all of Friday, I was trying to get all of that stuff around. And then when she left, I had some stuff I had to take care of at the house that was like my responsibility. Uh, and then 
That's why I haven't had a video, but let me get into this video. We've already spent five minutes talking about nonsense. What I want to talk about is my personal opinions on the new updated nearby list and the sightings and all of that different stuff. Uh, my suggestions for improvement and stuff like that. Most people just talk about the new update and tell you what it is and it's like, okay, yeah, that's cool. It's new, whatever. No one really gives you an opi a real opinion uh, that they really have because most people just BS um what they've got to say so what i wanted to say about it first of all sightings while it's kind of cool okay because it tells you that at least other people found the pokemon what it doesn't tell you is that there are other pokemon around that's not like what's nearest by see the sightings is just what people found so say there's a dragonite you know in one building, but nobody's gone to that building yet. No one's gonna find that Dragonite before it despawns because no one knows that there's a Dragonite somewhere around. So it's gonna cut down on like the the awesome catches that people get. Unfortunately, I have not been part of any of those awesome catches, but uh, I, I this will just cut down on them because no, I I would prefer over the sightings. I would prefer the three step. When we had the, it was not a glitch because they turned it off. We're like, I think this is like 95% confirmed that they turned it off. So it's not the, it's not a glitch. It's they turned it off. But I would go back to the three steps over this, over sightings, because also with the three step, when we were stuck on three steps, it showed every Pokemon nearest to you. Now they weren't in order. Neither are sightings. Um, I there are a couple of YouTubers have already talked about that. That um. Uh, there aren't they aren't in order uh, mostly trainer tips he uh, he talked about it and then also I've seen a couple other videos where people just quickly mentioned it and then also I tested it myself I went out for pizza Friday night with some friends and we all well most of us played Pokemon Go so I so we got all our phones out because a lot of us were wondering this question if they were in order now and they aren't because uh, we pulled them up we all had the nine sightings um, because we were in kind of a bigger area so there were there were nine sightings where I live. You usually get like six sightings until you go to the city or you go to certain areas. You don't see nine, but where we were, there were nine. And so we had six phones laid out and mine and two of my friends were the same. They were, they were, they were in the same order and the same Pokemon. Then another friends was in the same order was in the same order one through six and the bottom three two of them were swapped and then one was a different pokemon uh then my next friend it was just all different nothing was really the same it was just all really jumbled up compared to the first uh four of us and then my next friend his was completely jumbled up as well and uh it was in different order actually we had seven we had seven phones not six but his was in completely different order, except the last and the first one were correct. Like, the same as the first three of us. And then the final persons had four different Pokemon compared to everybody else. Like, they were different than the difference from the other people. So, you don't even get the full gamut of Pokemon um, if you compare it with someone else's phone. Which you used to, but when the three-step issue started, or when they turned the steps off... That's when that went out the window too. At the very beginning of the game, if you took out your iPhone or you took out your phone and you put it next to someone else's phone and you opened up your nearby list, they were the same, in the same order, um, and to the same distance away. So that was the really cool thing at the beginning of the game. Um, and then obviously that kind of went by the wayside. Second of all, with this, is it takes away. It's really hard to decipher if something is a nest or just a, a high concentrated spawn. Like my house is a high concentrated spawn for Eevees. I probably open my app and get an Eevee once a day. Um, now they run away really quickly. I'm not sure what that is. Like I get like two Pokeballs at them and if I don't catch them in that they, they bolt. But um, it's more than that because I can, they're like on a six or eight hour rotation at my house. Uh, because I can find, if you open up the, you gotta open up the app at the right times most of the time uh, to catch the Eevees at my house, but it's like a highly concentrated spawn. There's a high concentrated bell sprout spawn at my house sometimes too, where I'll get like four bell sprouts in a day at my house. Um, 
that's different than a nest, like the park, like the Volpex nest that turned into a Clefairy nest. Uh, and it's really hard to decipher whether it's a nest or a highly concentrated spawn anymore because it doesn't show you on the sightings list all of the sightings. Like, if there are five Vulpix sightings in, like, whatever the time frame is that they stay on your little list, it will only show one Vulpix. So you can't figure out, okay, so there's five Vulpix here, that probably means it's a Vulpix nest. Well, only one Vulpix is going to show up, making it so you can't really figure out if this is a nest, a highly concentrated spawn, or you just got lucky that there were multiple Vulpix here. That That's really what I'm saying, is that's really hard to decipher now, is on nests. And then the biggest thing that not everybody else has, because really sightings, if you want to really break it down in my opinion, it's a crappier version of what we just had. Uh, because now we don't see every Pokemon that's like near, usually they were, if it was on the list, it was the nearest thing to you. Now they weren't necessarily the nine in order, but they were usually the nine closest to you. I say generally because it wasn't always, which is what I've come to expect with Pokemon Go is, you know, it's good. But it doesn't always, it doesn't always work how it should, and that's how it was. But it was generally all right. Uh, the same with the sightings, it's generally all right. But I actually preferred what we previously had to sightings. And my Xbox is making noise. All right. And then next, the most important thing, we don't all have it yet, but it is the most important thing when talking about the new update, is the nearby now, I'm pretty sure by now you've all seen it, uh, but I'll break it down real quick. I'm not going to throw it up on the screen, but I'll just break it down really quick. So, a Pokestop, if you click on the Pokestop, you know you get that circle, and it's got the picture in it, okay? So now, down at the bottom, when you open up your nearby slash sightings list, nearby will be a circle, and you'll get the picture of the Pokestop and a Pokemon next to it, okay? And what you do is you can click, if you don't already know what Pokestop it is, you can click on it, it'll give you an overhead view and kind of let you map out and figure out how to get to that Pokestop. Now, with this, they should have probably, it would have been nice, because we know it exists, because we had all those external sources um, with uh, uh, Pokevision and all of that different stuff. And also with that... Um, be careful with the IV checkers. We're not sure. Nobody's really sure right now. People are getting permabanned right now for, um, like, botting and all that stuff, which is fine. That's that's cool. But technically, um, like, checking your IVs and all of that different stuff um, technically breaks the terms of service. No one actually thinks you'll get banned for it, but it does technically violate the terms of service. So be careful with that for a few days. I actually may be one of the only YouTubers that hasn't ever used Poke Advisor or any of the IV checkers because I don't care because there's not competitive battling right now. Now, if we get competitive battling, I will start caring about my IVs, but I don't right now. So I'm probably the only YouTuber that really hasn't even done any research into the IV checkers for Pokemon Go. But I do know you do need to just be a little bit careful for the next few days or the next week just until everybody has a little bit more information about that uh, but let me get back into what i was talking about so we know that each pokemon has a designated time assigned to it before it despawns every pokemon that spawns in the world even through incense and lures have a despawn time now incense and lures despawn times are a lot quicker they despawn a lot quicker. But for the Pokemon in the actual world, it usually ranges from somewhere around five minutes to a half hour, maybe even longer. A uh, half hour is like the highest I've seen, but it probably ranges even higher. Now, what they should have done, done because that is coded into the game. It's coded in the game because we know that. We saw it on all these different websites. It's coded into the game. So... They should have put next to the Pokestop how long you had until it disappeared. Because then you're not driving all over the world trying to catch Pokemon and then missing out on them because they despawn on you. Because you don't know how long they have until they despawn. At least with the, at least with on foot when you were doing the three steps, you could run. You knew it was close. You knew it with it was in, I think it's like 
it was in with within like 125 meters or 150 meters so you knew you could run to it you had a shot at it with the driving a pokey stop can be like 10 minutes away that you can see on your map by the time you get through traffic and all of that different stuff so you can waste a lot of time driving from Poke Stop to Poke Stop, trying to catch the Pokemon you want, and never actually finding it. Uh, so I think it would have been best if they added a timer there to let you know how long until that Pokemon despawned. Next is, I will talk more about this in my Pokemon Etiquette video. I'm going to talk about that in the next video. It's going to be about Pokemon Etiquette. Just things you should keep in mind, and different things that you should be courteous of, and you know, follow rules, all that different junk. But with this, Pokemon are being spawned at Pokestops. And everybody knows that this Pokemon is at this Pokestop. So imagine a hotel. There are Pokestops within a hotel, okay? Some that you can't reach from outside. You need to be inside the hotel. Well, what if a Dragonite, or even like a Dratini, spawns at a near, at a Pokey stop within a hotel at night when it's closed. You can't get in there. You can't get into the area where you need to get to to get the Stratini. What do you think is going to happen in big cities, especially? People are going to jump the fence or sneak their way in. We're, like, P Pokemon Go people are already getting the police called on them, um, getting told to leave, stuff like that already. What do you think is going to happen when stuff is closed? and stuff spawns there. Like, there's a there's a zoo close to me, and it's closed a lot. Like, it's it's got a bunch of Pokestops. I really need to go check it out. I want to go there. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, but it's got, like, 30 Pokestops, but it's closed a lot. It's open Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays for the big crowds. But it's closed, I think, like, two and a half days during, the, like, Monday through Thursday. I think it's closed two and a half days. I think it's open on half of Tuesday and all of Wednesday, uh, and so it was closed a lot, and there's a ton of Pokestops. Imagine stuff starts spawning in there. You're going to have issues. People are going to want to get to these Pokemon. So what Niantic needs to do, now that's kind of a poor example, but for things like churches and things like golf courses, because golf courses have been a high spawn uh, nest area, um, I really need to get out. I haven't played golf that much this summer. I'm still kind of, I'm not 100% with my foot, and it's just not warranted good golf. And when I play golf, uh, I like to be good at golf. So um, if I can't if I can't twist my foot real well right now, I'm not going to play the best golf that I can. And I know that, and it's just kind of deterred me from playing a whole lot of golf this summer. But they've been nests, and people have been going to these and like sneaking around and sneaking out on the course and it's just rude and people are people that are playing pokemon go act like it's rude that they ask you to leave but really golf is an expensive hobby to play it's an expensive sport to play it's expensive to play around a golf at most places i guess it depends on where you're playing i get it's still kind of pricey for like 18 holes of golf it's still pretty pricey no matter where you go uh, it's like it's like 30 bucks to play golf anywhere you go and then you get upscaled like there's a course around me that's 150 bucks to play 18 holes um but it's a it's supposed to be a relaxing experience you don't want to have to worry about hitting kids walking around with their phones out on the course with your golf ball like that can kill people you don't want to be like teeing off and have a kid walk across the fairway like it's a valid point that the golf courses have to kick people off and what this is going to do is there are pokey stops at golf courses. Now, mo a lot of golf courses have filed to, you know, get their pokey stops removed and all that, which is cool. I'm happy that they can do that. It, it cuts it cuts down on the amount of kids getting in trouble or people getting in trouble. It cuts down on the golf courses having to be the quote unquote bad guys and kick people off the course and all of that different stuff. And what Niantic should do, though, is add more Pokestops, like figure out, okay, well, we removed a Pokestop in this town at the golf course. Okay, so we should add another one somewhere else in this town so this town doesn't continually lose Pokestops because people want them out. Because we can, I think it just takes one or two complaints and Niantic will remove the Pokestop. So you can get into that dicey area where all a ton of Pokestops get removed. But what I'm saying with this nearby thing, 
is it needs to be, I don't know, not monitored, but places of business that have, that are, Pokestops that are inside places of business, especially hotels, golf courses, um, stuff like that, stuff that you can't just drive up to and access the, the Pokestop from your car or standing outside the building, um, not loitering outside the building, but, you know, you can walk up to the building, catch your Pokemon, and leave. Um, those are fine for this, but stuff where you have to get into places, access places inside of areas that close and get locked up, they need to do some sort of job to measure this, figure out, you know, churches don't have Pokemon spawn at Pokestops at churches on Sundays. It's pretty simple. Don't have them spawn at golf courses from... 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. Just don't have anything spawn there from those times. You, you, there are code words in the game. Most churches have the word church in them. If you go up to them and spin the Pokestop, most of them have the word church. So they could type in the word, the keywords for church or Methodist, Baptist, all the different types of religion. Okay, I'm not going to name them all, but you know what I'm talking about. All the different types of religion. Take those keywords and set the Pokestop, do not spawn Pokemon between 12 midnight and 12 midnight the next night on Sundays. You know what I'm saying? So you don't interfere, you don't have people like like being weird when people are trying to go to church, like kids driving around or walking around outside the church with their phones out. Uh, and the same with golf courses. If nothing spawns at the course... Overnight, kids aren't tempted to go in there at night and be weird and sneak onto the course and get in trouble. Um, this is just, it's interesting, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out because it's in beta, but it, it has the capability to really hurt the game and give it a really negative rap and all of this different stuff. If Pokemon are just spawning at Pokestops and people are just driving around and sneaking into different areas or just like loitering at different areas catching these Pokemon. Um, I'll talk more about the loitering thing in my etiquette video because I do have some stuff to say about that and uh, just good good etiquette about different stuff with Pokemon Go because you see a lot of people just they're just like oblivious they just don't care <laughs> it's just all about them and their Pokemon Go like there are other people in the world that aren't playing Pokemon Go. Uh, the same can be said, I guess, about parks and stuff like that. But that's my thoughts on the nearby list, um, the, the new update to the tracking system, even though we do still don't have any tracking, per se. Like, 99.9% .9 of the world doesn't have any tracking still. And I don't really count the nearby, the new nearby with the Pokestops. It's not really a tracking. That's just, oh, there's a Pokemon over here. Go catch it. That's not really tracking. But guys, I hope you all enjoyed. Drop the video a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't. And I will catch you all in the next video. Peace out, guys.